I want to use the vertical abacus to express a number in a different base now. I want to express this number, 100, zero, zero, in base 5 in our normal base 10 system. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I have to uh, relabel the, the wires. This is set up for base 10. I have to re -change, I have to change things up. So I'm going to keep the decimal point in the same place. Uh, this is separating the, the whole number part from the fractional part. But I have to relabel these guys. So let me do that right quick. Uh, here are the new labels. Uh, I'm, I'm doing powers of 5 now. So we start with 5 to the 0, which is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. Uh, 5 to the 1st is just 5. 5 to the 2nd is 25. 5 to the 3rd is 125. On fractional parts, 5 to the negative 1 is 1 fifth, or 0.2. And 5 to the negative 2 is 1 25th. So I'm going to relabel using these blue labels now. Okay, here it is labeled with the new values for each wire. Here's the ones wire again. Um, this is now the fives wire. Anything on this wire is worth five. Anything on this wire is worth 25. Anything on this wire is worth 125. On the fractional side, uh, one fifth and one twenty fifth. You see the symmetry. Here's the uh, the fives wire and the fifths wire. Here's the twenty fives wire and the twenty fifths wire. Okay, here's the number I want to express. 100 zero, zero in base 5. Well, it's all set up for base 5 now. So I need to have... Oh, by the way, I, I'm now short on beads in the back. I only have the beads 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 because the, those are the only digits in base 5. So I only have four beads in the back, in theory at least. So I need to put a 1 on that third wire. Let me go to the third wire. 1 there. And that's the number... 100 zero, zero in base 5. What is that in base 10? Well, I've got 1 on the 25's wire and nothing else. So this is 1 uh, times 25 is 25. Here's the calculation I used to find that. Yeah, so 25 in base 10 is expressed as 100 zero, zero in base 5. Again, this is not 100. This is uh, 100 is, is uh, base 10 language. This is base 5. 100 zero, zero base 5 is 25 base 10. Let's convert another number in base 5 using the setup we have for the base 5 vertical abacus. Uh, here's the number I want to convert. 1042 in base 5. What is that in base 10? Well, I just have to put the right number of beads on the, on the wires. Uh, looks like I need a 2 on the 1's wire. I need a 4. This is all the beads I have for the 4's, for the 5's wire. Uh, I need nothing for, for this wire. And I also need to have one on the 125's wire. So here's this number written in base 5 on the base 5 abacus. What does that turn into in base 10? Well, take one set of 20, 125, you take four sets of 5, and you take two sets of 1. And the number I got was 147 in base 10. Here's the calculation I've used for that. So 1042 base 5 is 147 in base 10. So far we've used the base 5 abacus to do whole number conversions into base 10. But what, what if we have a fractional number? Uh, what if we have a number like this? 0 0.23 in base 5. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's done in almost exactly the same way. I just use the wires that are to the right of the decimal place over here. So what do I need to do? I need to put 2 and 3 to the right of the decimal point. 2 on this one, 3 on that one, and there is the number 0 0.23 in base 5. What does that mean in base 10? Well, I have two beads on the fifths wire, so that's two fifths, and I have three beads on the 1 25ths wire, so that's 3 25ths. Add these numbers together. I uh, use a calculator or whatever, but I want to get this into decimal form. Um, here is the number that I got. So 0 0.23 in base 5 is another way of writing 0 0.52 in base 10, which you and I would probably call 52 hundredths. Let's use this vertical abacus to represent binary numbers now, base 2. I have the same issue. I can, I can use these wires to represent anything I want. Um, I can put the decimal point to separate the whole number from the fractional part. I can put that wherever I'd like. Let's put it there. 
and I need to label my wires with each of their values. So in my base 2 system, here are the labels that I'm going to put on there. And again, you notice that we always start with 2 to the 0 or 1, the 1's wire. Uh, and the next one up is going to be 2 to the 1st, which is just the, the base 2. So in base 2, it goes 1, 2, 4, and 8. And on the other side, with symmetry, you have halves and fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and label this thing with these new labels now. Okay, so here is my relabeled vertical abacus. Uh, each of the wires now has a value to it. The one to the left of the decimal point is always worth 1, no matter what base you're in. The one to the left of that is always worth the base, which is 2 in this case. Uh, times the base itself will give you the next wire, so that's 4. Times the base again will give you 8, so you're multiplying by 2 every time. You're doubling. Again, we have the symmetry of uh, 2 on this wire and half on this wire. We have 4 on this wire and fourths on this wire. So there is a binary abacus. Using the base 2 or binary vertical abacus now, let's do a conversion from base 2 into base 10. Now realize that every wire only has one bead on it now. It either has a wire or it does not. So here, here's the problem I want to convert. 1011 base 2. Uh, so I get to put that number of, of beads on every wire. Uh, and what is that in base 10? So let's go through this, this process. Um, let's see. We have a 1 on the fourth wire over. So that's here. That's worth 8. Uh, we have none on this wire, so we don't have to add anything there. Uh, we have a 1 on the 2's wire, and we have a 1 on the 1's wire. So there is 1, 0, 1, 1 in base 2. What is that in base 10? That's worth 8 plus 2 plus 1. That looks like 11. So our base 10 conversion is there. And recognize this is the number 11 in base 10. Uh, this, is, this is the word we have for that particular configuration of digits. Um, and that's another way of writing the number 1011 in base 2.